What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video in today's video. We are back with another episode of Lions Latest, going through the latest Detroit Lions news. And today we are here with our first wave of cuts for the Lions as they continue to work down to their 53-man roster that is due August 29th, Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So let's get it started. Welcome to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with another Lions latest video. And this one is really the worst type of video that we can do. We do need to talk about it. It's something that we talk about a lot up to this process. The roster bubble, the players that you add, who's going to make the team. We predict, we do live streams, we do all these things. But when it actually starts happening, there is that side of it that you absolutely hate. I just want to say that I'm wishing the best for all of these players, whether that's landing elsewhere, maybe that's back here, maybe that's on the practice squad, maybe that's somewhere else, wherever that may be, just wishing all these guys the best of luck man because we know that yes we talk about it it's great to talk about but at the same time this is their jobs this is what they do and you really do hate that side of it start happening you just can't help but really feel for these guys and I think a perfect example of this and we saw the battle that those guys put out there on the preseason this year I mean there was incredible effort and I think you look at a guy like Muhammad Ibrahim and that one I think hit really well because you could just see the emotion of the player you could see him clearly dealing with an injury when he stepped in there there was an opportunity we had running backs that were out. He had a real opportunity for the Lions after a great day in training camp, and you could see him just battling to fight through an injury. And like, I'm not coming off the field because I understand the opportunity that I have right now. He just did not want to come off the field. I mean, in any other situation, he's a second round pick. The guy's coming off the field. Like, hey, we need to make sure he's good. But he wasn't in that spot. And you just have to respect the players for giving that kind of effort, man. With that being said, I just wanted to put that out there before we get into some of the cuts and this latest news that we're going to dive into here for the Lions. Now, them together today on X. The Detroit Lions announced this or Twitter. They put the list of players that have been let go, but I'm sure we're going to get individual like news like, hey, this guy just let, let go. We're going to get that here and there. We had that with a few players here today. And if there's something that really stands out and I'm available, I'll definitely jump on that. Maybe just do a video on that player and update what we had learned to that point. Otherwise, my next video will probably be another grouping video like this. And there probably will be one tomorrow at some point in time. But with all that being said, I wouldn't say there was a ton of shockers today. There wasn't a ton of like, wow, hey, I'm surprised that guy I got let go but there was one that really did stand out to me if you follow this channel if you watch me over here I expected him to make the team start with a veteran that is not going to go through the waiver wire which means you have four or less seasons you go through the waiver wire and teams can put out a claim and then it just goes through the order of your draft order and whoever has the first claim in there basically gets that player these veterans don't go through that they just become available and I don't know the timing reasons behind these I'm not going to act like I do you know I do wonder a little bit if certain veterans are like hey man we're going to kind of let you go early we made that decision maybe it gives them more more time to negotiate a new deal with someone else. I don't really know. I mean, the waiver wire, everybody kind of goes through it and teams can put that claim out there. I guess it could be a little bit different for veterans. Start with one, and that is Christian Covington, the defensive tackle. Now, the thing with Christian Covington is I don't think he played necessarily bad in the preseason. I thought he had a couple flash plays here and there as a pass rusher. He wasn't a dominant pass rusher, but the biggest thing that stood out, especially game two, a little bit into game three, was the run defense. The ability to sit down, the ability to play the run, fit into what the Lions wanted to do schematically, play through his blocks. That was the biggest thing that stood out to me there was some of the consistency as a run defender. And I know I've said this many times. I felt like he was in some ways kind of an insurance plan for what Levi was going to look like this season. You look at the body type, definitely not the athlete that Levi is, but kind of felt like that. Like, hey man, if this thing goes really wrong, at least we have another body at this positional group. But I think a big part of this move was Levi doing what he did in the preseason. That's not to say that he was always great against the run. There was a lot of hit and miss there. Same thing as a pass rusher. But you saw the ceiling. You saw the upside. You saw the second effort wins. You saw the incredible get off, which was better than almost everybody out there on some occasions. You saw that from Levi. And I think because of that, it makes it very difficult for a guy like Christian Covington to crack into this roster. I just don't think the number is necessarily matched up for him. With that being said, though, I think there's a role for Christian Covington somewhere. Maybe that's back with us. Maybe that's somewhere else. Maybe that's a mid-season role. I mean, I could see this guy being very valuable for somebody. I'm sure he'll land somewhere, but I just don't think as of right now, the numbers made sense for Christian Covington. A lot of waves to go through right the players that are going to go through the waiver wire so we'll kind of just knock these out really quickly here first off we have center Alex Molay one of our more recent signings we had lost Ross Pierce Baker who was kind of like our third string center and then we had Brad Cecile who was like our fourth string I know we forget about Graham Glasgow because you know Graham Glasgow didn't play I forget him out about him all the time too but he's I guess he's technically our backup center so we add Alex Molay and he was kind of the final center we saw him in preseason games look I don't even think a guy like Brad Cecile is safe I really don't think Brad Cecile is safe so I guess that 
kind of tells you where that's at when you just look at the depth chart there of wide receiver trinity benson yes benson was the guy that brad holmes traded for but again when you look at the receiving side of things i thought the biggest issue for trinity benson was again just missing time missing time through training camp missing time in the preseason it was just not being out there enough i mean i think again that was the biggest problem for trinity benson and even this past game like if you went back and watched he didn't have any like explosive plays that really stood out to you but he had some really nice grabs and there was some good route running that you would notice as well in this last game against the panther you could really pick him out panthers but you could really pick him out when you were watching the game really wasn't many dynamic plays in the small amount of time that he was out there for the lions so trinity benson has been waived as well as avery davis who we didn't really see a ton i mean we saw him a little bit in this last game against the panthers kind of coming towards the end as well as jason moore who has been cut by the lions he was like our most recent signing the receiver out of finley all right this is another guy that we really didn't see in this past week i mean we saw them a little bit when adrian martinez stepped into the game but again none of these guys really stood out avery davis was a little bit was around a little bit longer we got to see him a little bit at training camp he didn't really stand out to me uh at training camp and some of the individual one-on-one -on -one drills ability to separate i didn't really notice that and then he was let go by lions and then he was ultimately brought back when we had another injury at the receiver position i believe was to trey quinn so they ended up bringing back avery davis but again i didn't really notice anything that really stood out to me in training camp i didn't see much of an impact even in team drills and then again you saw in the game we just didn't have much opportunity there for him to really show something for avery davis continuing on we have obina eze this one's pretty disappointing to see this i i'm not going to say it was a surprise i didn't expect him to make the roster it would have been an uphill climb regardless last year he was on the practice squad for the lions the biggest thing for me there is i don't know that we saw massive strides from obina eze i thought there was some real flashes of good especially in practice the ability to anchor down but even when he got to the preseason games you just didn't see that kind of consistency not really to make the team definitely not at that level so i think there were signs of like okay there's improvement here and we know that he had a ways to go when he was coming out and that's probably a big reason that he was undrafted he's an excellent athlete it just didn't seem like those kind of strides were necessarily in place to be in a position for obina eze to make this roster he did play both tackle positions so that could add some flexibility down the road and maybe they'll end up getting him back on the practice squad but for now he has been waived as well as tight end daniel helm he was signed about the same time as daryl daniels now daniel helm definitely was not the athlete that daryl daniels was who was also a former receiver but daniel helm showed real ability to pass protect and even in this pass game there was a really good pass protect rep on a play action set where he held up really well on the edge that was real that was a big part of his game but there wasn't the splash plays in the receiving game he actually had a drop in this past game he wasn't getting the same opportunity that a daryl daniels was i just don't think maybe there was enough juice there for daniel helm i thought there were worth some things to really like especially in training camp i can remember talking about the instance where in kind of a tight you know goal line situation where he found the soft spot of the defense pried himself open and made himself a target for the quarterback again this is a guy that feels like he has a role potentially somewhere on somebody's practice squad would not shock me if he landed there but for the lions there just wasn't enough juice there was not enough production there for him to really i think compete for a potential roster spot for the lions scott nelson who just wasn't here long enough i think it's just that simple even if he played perfect if he made the tackle that he missed in the open field in this last game does he make the team no i mean to be honest he's, he's probably not making the team regardless of really what he did this past game but with that being said i would love him to have him back to the practice squad because there were some good there was definitely some good he's played well in the preseason in the past he contested an incomplete pass the open field tackle miss which i believe would have gotten us off the field but you saw that real closing ability the range all right he showed willingness to step in and play the run he just was not here long enough simply put and because of savion smith being waived injured this was an addition that the lions made to add some more depth to that unit but he wasn't really in a position to compete for a roster spot definitely practice squad could be in play even there he's going to have some real competition though because if brandon joseph gets let's go i'm sure they'll want to get him back brady breeze same thing but scott nelson just didn't have enough of an opportunity Darren Paolo the offensive guard now for the Lions he played both guard positions a little bit for us and I think there were moments in there where I thought there was some real good for Darren Paolo I was like okay I kind of like that but it was not again consistent enough specifically in pass protection for Darren Paolo I didn't think he was maybe a dominant run blocker at that guard position Colby Richardson who was one of our more recent signings as well at the cornerback position with injuries we bring in Colby Richardson the biggest thing for him as I think you saw real resilience to bounce back right his first preseason 
preseason game was not great. That was week two. It was not great. But he bounced back this past week, and he ended up getting in on a couple of potential receptions. He had a pass defense in there. It still didn't look extremely clean, right? I still think there's probably a ways to go within his game, and I really do question if he can stick with some guys, if he has the foot quickness off the line of scrimmage in press. You definitely like his length. You like his build. You like the size. It feels like it's a little bit raw right now, which makes sense. Even if you look at how much he played in college, it would make sense that he's raw. He was a transfer to LSU that didn't even start every game. So this is a player that seems pretty raw. But you definitely love his body type, and I love the fact that he showed that he was able to bounce back. Now, we have some specific cuts to announce. First off, Devine Ozigbo, the running back. Yeah, Ozigbo just really, again, didn't have much of an opportunity. We saw a week ago where Ozigbo, I was like, I don't even know if the guy was out there. We did see him a little bit this past week. Honestly, Ozigbo, I think everything that you were kind of hoping for that you had seen on the film prior seemingly showed up. I mean, you saw some ability to step in there and pass for Tech, though it wasn't always perfect. There was real ability to do that. And I think the biggest thing was the, the fight, the ability to fall forward, to finish as a runner, right? That was the biggest thing that stuck out, I think, when you watched him. And then when he came here, he brought that right over to the Lions. He has real ability to make big plays when he gets out in space. It's just the role I don't think was necessarily there. And Davino, Davino Zigbo was one of the Lions' cuts. So Bobby Hart, another interior offensive lineman. The Lions still have a lot of offensive linemen still in this roster to kind of sort through. But Bobby Hart has been let go. And again, this one's tough because I thought there was real flashes in there where you're like, oh man, actually there could be something here. Meaning that in the second preseason game, they moved him into basically the backup offensive line role. They kicked him in at guard after not having been here that long. He went from being at the bottom of the depth chart, barely playing, to week two in the preseason. He was in a position where he was getting some legitimate snaps. and played tackle in the past. You saw awareness, I saw it at times, especially having to deal with stunts and handle those when other times it just did not look great from our offensive line. But I don't know that the reliability necessarily ever really happened in terms of consistency as a pass protector or maybe even a run blocker. There were definitely parts of the game that you did like for Bobby Hart. I just don't know that it ever came together fast enough where you got enough consistency there for Bobby Hart. But definitely took some strides with us and he'll be an interesting guy to keep an eye on and see what ends up happening with Bobby Hart. And then finally, we have a guy that I did think was going to make the 53-man roster. This was the biggest surprise to me of day one of the cuts and, and the first wave of cuts. And that was Jermaine Effetti, the former first-round pick being let go by the Detroit Lions. And I really think one very big issue for Jermaine Effetti, kind of the flip side of Bobby Hart here, was the second preseason game, right? When the Lions went from playing him at the right tackle position and Matt Nelson at left tackle to flipping that in the second preseason game, to flipping a lot of the positions on the offensive line. They flipped the tackle positions, and then it felt like Jermaine Effetti, specifically in pass protection, just had a couple of plays in there. He allowed a couple of quarterback hits. We saw it on Teddy Bridgewater. Just a lot of couple of quarterback hits in that game. I don't think he gave up any sacks but some quarterback hits, gave some hurries, had a couple of ugly pass sets in there. And the unfortunate part about him, about that is that is really the best part of his game. And you talk about the athleticism, the movement skills. I mean, that was really there. Like the ability to get it to the second level. He had some pretty blocks at the second level. But he wasn't that you walk away from this preseason stretch and say, well, he's a better run blocker than Matt Nelson and what the Lions are looking for. I don't think you would say that. I would think you would say, man, Matt Nelson looked like he was a better run blocker in terms of consistency. We know that they like using Matt Nelson as a sixth offensive lineman. And because of when they kind of flip positions, Jermaine Effetti seemingly had a little bit of a rough day. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't terrible either, but it wasn't his best. And then they flipped it back and he went back to the right tackle position. Probably wasn't the best sign for Jermaine Effetti. Again, I thought he was fine. Potentially be that backup swing tackle for us. Uh, Matt Nelson, I think part of that as well is I thought he helped himself the last couple of days in preseason. I thought he had a rough opener and that's when they flipped it. Uh, but the last two days in the preseason, I thought he improved. That that's not again say that it was perfect, right? He still gave up some hurries as well, but he didn't have any blown blocks that I necessarily noted in this past game. So I think that also could play a factor in this as well. And a big part of this finally is that I do believe the Lions will probably be targeting an offensive tackle or an offensive lineman. I mean, it could definitely be an interior guy. He could play the center position as well. I think Colby Sore still will make this roster. I think he helped himself a little bit in this past game. Also, we did see Colby Sore still play a little bit of right tackle. It didn't look necessarily the best. I remember there was a zone play where it was brought down from behind. He was unable to kind of seal it off, but he did play a little bit of right tackle, so maybe the Lions feel like there's some flexibility there. Of course, he did that in college as well, so maybe they feel like there's some flexibility there there too and maybe that was one 
another part of the reason that they felt like there was some flexibility here with not bringing back Jermaine Effetti. But overall, I kind of anticipate we're going to go after some offensive lineman somewhere. And maybe that is a small little trade that the Lions make uh, for someone that they want to try to keep from getting into the waiver wires, kind of like the Trinity Benson deal, but maybe for an offensive lineman. We've seen some offensive linemen already be moved around uh, in the last couple of days. So maybe something like that's possible. They just don't come available very often. I'm sure there will be at least one free agent signing of an offensive lineman here pretty soon. And maybe that's just for practice squad maybe that is a guy that really stands out and like hey we really feel like this guy can be a 53 man roster type of player but I do expect somewhere somehow there will be some movement at least we'll get some new bodies in there to compete specifically for the tackle position but it could also be for the interior as well but if anything I think this does make it a lot safer for Matt Nelson I think the big thing there for them is that they feel like there's real flexibility within his game I think that's the biggest thing but I can't really say that I think that they feel extremely confident that like hey Matt Matt Nelson, he's, we're super confident that he's that swing tackle for us. I don't know if that that's necessarily where they're at. So yeah, that one definitely surprised me a little bit here. Again, I don't think Jermaine Effetti was dominant the last two days in the preseason, but at the same time, I did anticipate he was going to make the roster. So there you go. I'm already wrong. Offensive linemen, they have a lot of them still here. A lot of guys that will go through the waiver wire. Brad Cecile, KO, Max Percher, Connor Galvin, Ryan Swoboda, who I didn't think was great necessarily this last week. I am curious on Connor Galvin if, if they maybe see something potentially there, um, but I, I don't know if I really think that any of those guys are necessarily safe once you get past Matt Nelson and kind of that entire list that I have there. Tight end Daryl Daniels is still here. We'll see if something comes of that. Definitely feels like a practice squad spot is probably in play. At the receiver position, we now have a much smaller group to look at between Alexander, Drummond, Coda, and I guess you could throw Green in, but I'm pretty sure Green's making the roster. Definitely could see a new body added to that mix as well. That would not surprise me. At running back, it looks like we're getting really to that point. I, I do think we're going to have Benny Snell probably not make this roster. Quarterback position, Hennon Hooker. I think he'll probably end up on the NFI list for the Lions, the reserve NFI list. He's not there yet, uh, but what that would do was keep him out for the first six weeks, and then there'll be that three-week window for him return. That's kind of what I'm anticipating to open up a roster spot, that that's what will happen with Hooker, but that has not been official yet. The other player there would be Emmanuel Mosley, who I'm probably the most curious about, uh, who's on the active pup list, but he has not been placed on the reserve pup list. If he goes there, he'll miss the first four games before he can be brought off of that. It sounds like there's been some positive updates in terms of where he's at health wise so I'm not completely sure on that one but obviously that should affect who else they decide to keep if he's able to be ready for week one I don't expect it but he's another guy that is affecting this of course Jamison Williams is going to be suspended for the first six games so that's part of it as well so a couple players there that we're kind of waiting on but we kind of know what to expect the edge rusher position again I think we kind of know what's going to happen there defensive line Corey Durden Corey Durden is still around Chris Smith is still around we got my guy Benito Jones in there very curious on those three I think they all could honestly make somewhat of a case I think obviously Benito has the best case Corey Durden did some things when he kicked out to like a five technique this past week as well as a couple flash plays he had in the interior and I think Chris Smith has been really solid throughout the preseason. I don't know if there's been enough wow there, but he's been very solid. At the linebacker position, Anthony Pittman and Trevor are both still on the roster. I don't think either of those guys are actually going to make it on this final roster, but we'll keep an eye on it there. Cornerback, you can see we got a lot of names to sort through. Will Harris still here, Khalil Dorsey, uh, Stephen Gilmore, Starling Thomas, Chase Lucas. There's a lot of competition here, and there's a lot of the tough decisions that are going to have to be made. I'm so curious about Khalil Dorsey because I think that he had a really nice preseason throughout the preseason, but he just feels like the numbers necessarily aren't going to work out for him. But I'm very curious about Khalil Dorsey because I'm a big fan of what he was able to do in this preseason. Obviously, at the forest fumble. I just don't know that the numbers are going to work out there. It looks like a couple UDFAs may be making the team. At safety, Joseph and Breeze are still hanging on. If the Lions want to keep a fifth safety, which wouldn't be unnormal, actually be more normal that they did one of those guys could fall into that and finally at special teams they have not made a decision on that kicker battle yet but that's even a spot that they could look to add another kicker with that being said that's what we're currently looking at we'll keep an eye on it but until the next cuts let me know your thoughts in the comments below thank you for watching and i'm out